I didn't meet you till I was eight, because I was always with my sister. And she would laugh until she, I realised she was laughing to him, crying. And I was like, I'm just joking, Mum. I love you. And, um, but they worked very hard, sometimes two, three jobs. My parents always worked really hard to, to provide for our family. I loved being a part of a big family. I actually pay, became an auntie when I was three years old. This, okay, many of you know, I was very fashion forward in 1987, okay? Put your phones away, Glenis Tobison. The blue on the blue with the blue is very on trend before you guys start mocking me, all right? So this is me. I always tried new things and never worried about failing, even with my fashion, clearly. I learned at a young age that I really could achieve anything. If I worked hard enough, that I could get it. I learned that at a really young age. I was actually a really happy child. I still am a happy adult. <laughs> um, and my parents would always encourage me to try my best. Um, I was actually... I love sports. I was lucky enough to be able to kind of get into any sport and I represented um, my school, my state, the country. And I, I actually, I love sports. I love dancing. Not that great with English. <laughs> Bit better with mathematics. Um, but I always <coughs> love to try new things, whether it be bikes or whatever it is. I love to try new things. And I was always encouraged to try new things. Many times my mom would say, you're getting into mischief, trying new things. Same, same. So it was really, I had a great childhood. Um, I have some really wonderful memories, a lot of them around my family. But my parents would always encourage me to try my best. At age 11, my dad was diagnosed with acute leukemia and was given six months to live. That's me, that's my dad, and that's my cute little nephew who took over my light from my family, <laughs> just quietly. <laughs> my dad was a fighter, don't tell him I said that. My dad was a fighter and he always showed courage. He was actually given six months to live at his diagnosis. School holidays after that, was, many were spent at hospitals and so many times I wondered why did it have to be my dad? when other children would be going on vacations and they'd be like, my dad took us, my dad took me. I was visiting my dad in the hospital when he was dripped. A lot of the times he was throwing up into a cup and it was, it was hard. My dad passed away in January 1997 and I was 15 years old. This is my mum. She's 77 years old she is the most wittiest person I know. She is the boss and she is my hero. I was the only child living at home at that time when my dad passed away and I became my mum's rock. As you can imagine, she lost her sweetheart. She watched him battle for four to four and a half years with leukemia. So as you can imagine, she was a bit of a mess. That same year of 1997, when I lost my dad, nine months later, I met the love of my life and my sweetheart, Hemi. That's the spunk right here. <laughs> 20 years later, he is still as handsome as ever and he just treats me like an absolute queen. And I'm really blessed. I wouldn't actually be able to do this job if it wasn't for the spunk. <laughs> In June 2009, Hemi and I had our first child, Ryder. He is such a beautiful young man. He's well mannered, he's, he's really kind, he's really caring, he's like his father. <laughs> he has three younger sisters who eat him alive. <laughs> but he's just, he's a beautiful, beautiful young man. 2009 was the best and worst year of my life. Just in case. <clears throat> In August 2009, my brother, who was five years older than me, passed away at the age of 33. Four weeks later, his daughter, my niece, who was a twin preemie, passed away from an infection. <clears throat> in October 2009, my brother-in-law passed away from a heart attack. 
my family was falling apart. We had had three deaths in our immediate family in 12 weeks. I had developed cheerophobia. Cheerophobia is the fear of being too happy because of something bad will eventually happen. For years I had the fear of being too happy. At times those thoughts would literally stop me from enjoying my life. For instance, I was at a football game watching my nephew play rugby and we was just about to just try and this was one of those final games and we were so excited and we were cheering him on, cheering him on, cheering him on, so excited and I heard an ambulance and I burst into tears and I went and sat in the car and I didn't move out of my room for three days. It just clicked. So you can see how whenever I would have find any joy, how quick it could move. So I really struggled to find, to really be happy because I was in so much fear that it was, something was gonna go wrong immediately after. I felt guilty of finding happiness after my family had experienced such loss. Three deaths in 12 weeks. I know this is a bit um, word heavy, sorry, but it's dusty. <clears throat> I was constantly thinking of death and losing my family members. Like I literally was always thinking about losing my family members. I prefer not to be too joyful because usually joy is followed by sadness. I would wake up every hour on the hour to check that my son was breathing. I'd call my family to make sure they were still alive. I would think disasters, disasters often follow good fortune. Excessive joy has some bad consequences. And this fear was disabling me physically, mentally, and spiritually. I would always think of the worst outcomes to any situations, always. Does anyone, can anyone relate to how disabling that can be? Thank goodness, I'm getting a few nods, but I'm sorry, I'm getting a few nods. I had a fixed mindset that bad things were going to happen. I had a fixed mindset that I had no control over my life. I had a fixed mindset that it is what it is. That it was negative, negative onto negative. On negative. Um, one day I received a card from one of my really good friends and this is what it read. You will lose someone you can't live without and your heart will be badly broken and the bad news is that you never completely get over the loss of your beloved. But this is also the good news. They will forever in your broken heart that doesn't seal back up and you come through. It's like having a broken leg that never heals perfectly, that still hurts when the weather gets cold, but you learn to dance with a limb. I love to dance. I'm a lot better than Dan. And I don't dance with a limb. That's me dancing. That was not last week. That was quite a long time ago. I have, I love to dance. I had just forgotten how to. I realized that I can change. I can, I can change the bad, I can't change, sorry, the bad and sad things that have happened. I can't change the past. But I can choose to be grateful. I can choose to be happy. And I can choose to be thankful for the wonderful blessings that I have. And I made that choice. At that point, I wanted to feel the rhythm of life again. I wanted to cha-cha my way to making new memories and to thinking positive. Was it hard? Absolutely. Sometimes it's easier to be the victim. Sometimes it's easier to be sad. And sometimes it's easier just to not do anything at all. It was hard. It was really hard. Sometimes the smallest step in the right direction 
ends up being the biggest step in your life. Now you can tiptoe if you must, but you must take that first step. Being a part of Sensi, I've met some amazing people, many, many, many of you are in the room tonight, who believe in me, who encourage me to keep trying, and who make me feel like I belong. I hope tonight that we from Home Office make you feel like you belong and are a part of Sensi. This is my story. This is me. Just quietly, the one who's coming up, she's my cousin. And I know every Polynesian says that, but she really is my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so if you feel the need to get up and dance with me in your own space, because the stage is mine right now, <laughs> this is me.